Welcome back to the Death Row and Executions channel. I'm Paco Rivera. John Lazelle Ballantyne is scheduled to be executed in Texas on February the 8th. The execution scheduled after that will be Richard Glossop in Oklahoma on February the 16th. I did a 42 minute video on Glossop last year just prior to an execution date he had until the governor of Oklahoma rescheduled it for this year. So if you want to know more about the Glossop case, please find that video I did last year on this channel. John Lizelle Ballantyne grew up in Newport, Arkansas, where he had a lengthy criminal record beginning when he was just 15 years old. That included convictions for burglary, kidnapping, assault, and robbery. In 1996, when Ballantyne was 27 years old, he had broken into a home in Newport, abducted a young woman, and placed her in his car. But she escaped when he stopped at a convenience store to buy cigarettes. He was convicted for that crime and later released. While on parole, he fled to Texas. By the following year, 1997, he had made his way to the city of Amarillo in Texas, where he began dating a woman named Misty Kalor and later moved in with her into a small home on Southeast 17th Avenue. Also living in the home was Misty's 17-year-old brother, Mark Edward Kalor Jr. Many reports have him as Edward Mark Kalor, but that is not correct. At some point, John Ballantyne and Mark got into a heated argument and a fight over Ballantyne's treatment of his sister, of Mark's sister, and Ballantyne was kicked out of the home. Ballantyne would later tell police that he wasn't kicked out, that he left on his own because people were doing drugs in that house. Apparently, people doing drugs in the house had bothered the career criminal. Ballantyne had also told police, though no proof uh, or evidence was ever established, that his now ex-girlfriend's brother, Mark Edward, had made statements that he was coming after him and was going to kill him and his family, as if implying that as motive for going to the home and killing Mark first, before Mark could get to him. During John Ballantyne's confession to authorities, he'd said that on Wednesday, January 21st, 1998, he had arrived at the home of Misty Kaler several hours after midnight with a 32 automatic pistol. He made his way through the crawl space to an opening into the house and went inside. He said that he saw Mark Edward and two other boys asleep in the home. He didn't know who the other boys were. Ballantyne pointed his pistol at one of their heads and pressed the trigger, but the gun was jammed. Ballantyne said later during his confession that he then opened a window and went out to the backyard and was able to unjam the gun. While outside, he test fired the weapon by firing one shot and then went back inside the house through the window that he had left open. What John Ballantyne hadn't known was that the shot he fired outside had awakened a neighbor who called Amarillo police to report gunfire in the area. Inside the home, Ballantyne shot each of the three boys in the head. Remember, two boys, he didn't even know who they were. 17-year-old Mark Edward, 15-year-old Stephen Brady Watson, and 15-year-old Kai Brook Geyer. All three were shot while they were still sleeping. Amarillo police officer Timothy Hardin was dispatched at 2.26 in the morning to investigate a shots fired call near Southeast 17th Avenue. He arrived minutes later and spoke to the caller. Hardin then inspected the man's backyard, alleyways, and surrounding area. The officer later spotted John Ballantyne walking along the side of the road. Officer Hardin approached Ballantyne and patted him down in search for weapons. Ballantyne didn't have any on him, but Officer Hardin found a 32 caliber bullet, an unspent bullet, 
in Ballantyne's pants pocket. Don Ballantyne gave the officer a fake name, saying his name was John Smith. He'd also told the officer that he was at Walmart and was just walking back to his sister's house where he was staying, and which was located about five miles away. Hardin then escorted Ballantyne back to his patrol car for further questioning. Officer Hardin would later testify that this whole situation took place about 50 yards away from the home where the three teenage boys were killed. Officer Hardin eventually decided to release Ballantyne because it's not illegal to carry a bullet in your pocket. At that point, Ballantyne told the officer that he was just going to go visit a friend nearby and Hardin drove him to that location and dropped him off there just past 3.30 in the morning. Later that day, after the sun was shining, Amarillo police were called to the scene of a triple homicide at that residence about 50 yards away from where Officer Timothy Hardin had questioned John Ballantyne, who gave his name as John Smith. It's not clear in reports who discovered the bodies. My guess is that maybe Ballantyne's ex-girlfriend, Misty Kalor, arrived home to find her younger brother and his two friends dead and called police. Investigators were made aware of the encounter that Officer Hardin had with a man in the middle of the night just yards away from the home where the three teenage boys were killed. And it did not take long for John Ballantyne to become the number one suspect. The hunt had begun for John Lazelle Ballantyne, but he had fled from Texas. John Ballantyne remained in hiding in the state of New Mexico for several months. Six months later, he was back in Texas, in Houston. The man wanted for murder and who had worked mainly as an auto mechanic during his lifetime was driving a car with a broken taillight. And it was because of that that he was pulled over by police in Houston. Ballantyne told the officer he didn't have a driver's license and once again gave a false name. After further questioning, the officer that pulled Ballantyne over was able to determine his true identity and the fact that he was wanted for murder in Amarillo. And he was arrested. Soon after the arrest, John Lazelle Ballantyne gave a full confession. He was later transported back to Amarillo where he was convicted and sentenced to death. One thing I found interesting about this case, it seems police responded to shots fired just minutes after the crime had occurred. And John Ballantyne was soon after that spotted and patted down and questioned. It was just minutes after this whole thing happened. Yet, what happened to the gun? The gun that was used was never found. My theory uh, on that is that Ballantyne later maybe returned to where he had hid the gun if he saw police in the area. After the area was clear of police presence, he retrieved the gun and got rid of it, maybe in New Mexico. There's no clear report on what ever happened to that. One of John Ballantyne's trial lawyers stated that John Ballantyne refused a plea bargain that would have gotten him a life sentence in prison, deciding that being isolated on death row would be safer for him than being mixed in with a dangerous prison population. Please remember to subscribe for more death row and upcoming execution stories. I am Paco Rivera. Bye for now.